guys, I hope your childhood was great. If it wasn't, I'm so sorry. Um, well, for the next couple minutes, I just want to talk about my future parenting style I want to use uh, when I have children. I know that's a random topic, but uh, I was just thinking about my own childhood, how my parents raised me. I think they did a pretty good job, but I think there's ways to improve on that, um, to, to be even better. Um, and I was listening to this audiobook a while back, um, and it gave me a lot of parenting advice. Not that I was looking for it at the time, but, uh, you know, that was just in the back of my head. And then I was like, well, now we have a video. So, um, I was thinking about it. How would I want to be a parent? And, uh, here's a video explaining how I would want to be a parent. Okay, well, we got to start with... You know, what do I want in a child, for sure. Uh, first off, I want them to be a good person. Just a good person. Um, I want them to be nice. I want them to be kind. I want them uh, to put good out into the world, for sure. Uh, I would say that's number one. Then second, you know, I want them to be independent. I want them to be able to make money. Um, I want them to be able to buy a house or whatever, you know, Thing they want to do that uh, gives them satisfaction in their life for sure uh, but I want them to be solely independent um, so they they know that they have the abilities to get things done the way they want to get it done for instance if they want to go to Mars or something they have it within their abilities to figure out how to get to Mars um, that's that's probably a little too hyperbolic but uh, you know they wouldn't have I just want them to not have to de be dependent on someone else for happiness or be dependent on someone else um, to I don't know to make rent or something like that I want them to know that they can uh, make money and they can succeed and whatever they put their mind to they can achieve you know so be happy be good, be nice, be independent. And then third, which was already kind of set with second one, um, is just to pursue things that they truly enjoy um, and make a meaningful life uh, for themselves. And so those are the three things I'm kind of looking for my child. I think that would make a successful child, you know? They don't have to be a rocket scientist um, for me to be proud of them. I just want them to to be independent, happy, nice, kind, and doing what they like, you know? That's, I think I just solved it, to be honest. Uh, but now, how do you parent for that? Um, well, one thing is, when they're a child, you know, what are they passionate about? I know, when I was a kid, <laughs> I could care less about being on a t-ball team, or a baseball team, or any sports team, for that matter. Um, but, on the flip side, my parents never had me go to a t-ball or sign me up for t-ball or something like that. Um, so, this is the one thing that would be the hardest part for me is just figuring out how do I show my kids or my kid um, what interests there are outside of, you know, the immediate family, you know, what can they get into what can they find that's truly their passion um, and things that they want to actually pursue because I don't want to be a parent that forces them to do soccer or do football or something like that um, I want them to naturally enjoy what they want to do um, so this part is a little hazy I don't know exactly uh, but I would I would you know try to get them to do a lot of things not necessarily commit to a lot of things but just try a lot of things when they're young. And hopefully, within that time frame, they would find something that they like. For instance, if they really like painting, um, and they they tell me, hey, I think a paint, being, being a painter uh, is my passion, and that's, that's the career I wanna go down. Um, well, here's our scenario. You are a painting child, and I'm the parent. So to me right now, I'm like, okay, they're passionate about painting. Now, is, are they 
truly passionate about painting or is this just a fad? That, that's what's running through my head. Um, so first off, there's two options. Either it's a fad and it's gonna go away um, or they're truly passionate about it and I should support it, right? So I know nothing about painting, but in this situation, um, I will be supportive. I say, okay, you like painting, let's, let's figure out painting. And in this situation, I would love to connect with my child through painting. Either we do the paint by numbers or um, like Bob Ross tutorials or something, you know, to try to flourish in, in painting. Um, and hopefully uh, they can, they can uh, develop more skills than, than just the basic brush strokes, I guess. Um, and then at some certain point, I would love to kind of test them a little bit, give them a challenge, something that can push the boundaries of what they can do to see if that challenge either just knocks them down completely or gives them motivation to keep going. Um, and, you know, I would love to help them be supportive as much as possible to make sure they do succeed. Um, but if they don't, then I know, hey, you know, they, they don't, I, I guess they have to complete it. They don't have to be perfect at it. They, they just have to complete that challenge. Um, so in this situation, you know, like maybe make a, a, a self portrait and let me see how it turns out. It doesn't have to be a good one. It just has to, you just do it. And, um, like I said before, it's, it's, it's more about the challenge. Do they get bogged down? Do they get upset about it, about not being able, not being good enough to get it done? Or do they put in that extra work to try to get it done? Um, I think that would be probably one of the better things. Um, so then I know they're passionate about it. Um, and then when I do know they're passionate about it, second thing I'm thinking about is, okay, does the economy want paintings? Is there a way you can be successful at being a painter and make money? Now, there's nothing wrong with being like the starving artist, um, but I also want to set them up for uh, for the you know best outcome, the one that I've been living. You know, I know that if I have a job, I can make my payments, and I can have time to do my hobbies. Now, if they want to make their hobbies their full time then we have to be a really good hobbyist <laughs> to be like a career painter. So that's the thing that I'm thinking about. Um, how do we make that successful? Well, then if I, if I know they're passionate about it, then I want to just sit down and help them in any way possible to think about all the, I'm trying to think of what the word is, Think of all the, the different scenarios, not necessarily scenarios, uh, the avenues to pre-learn about, so then you're not, um, <laughs> you're not prepared for the future. Let's just say that. So like, for instance, if you're like, you wanna be a painter, well, okay, how are you gonna make money doing that? Well, okay, I, I personally don't know, but maybe, in this scenario, I'm like, okay, well, maybe you can sell your paintings for $10. Really young, you know, try to get some money. Maybe you can learn how to make a business model off of that. And then you can be successful. Because I don't know how to get into the painting world, but I would want to learn that research when you're young. So then when you get older and you still are into painting, you can use that to pursue that passion and be successful at it. Because if you can be a full-time painter, and have your own studio or whatever and make money that's awesome because you're doing what you're passionate about but you're also making your payments that you have to make um, so I would try to do that um, and then so this is weird but like let's just say my parent or my my child this this is completely different than painting but um, like my parent my my child wants an earring or something um, and there's nothing wrong with an earring for, for any reason, but, uh, I just don't want them to do something they will regret, you know, and 
I'm not saying like an earring is permanent or something or like a, a piercing is permanent, but like I want to challenge them to to give me a reason why they should get a piercing or or go to some sort of concert. If they can, you know, write me three pages of why they would love a piercing or go to this concert when they're young um, and they can show me that, yes, this these are some general reasons um, and they can put in a little bit of effort of why they should get something when they're young, then that again is is something that I would want to instill in them, you know, have them formulate their own thoughts about why they want to do something. Um, and then I would be way more open to letting them do it. Uh, I guess another scenario, <laughs> and I don't know why this, this came up, but I guess it's, I, it's probably way more relevant than anything now, um, would be like, let's just say my, my kid is, is, uh, let's say my kid's a boy, right, but identifies as a girl, right? Now this, this is a, a scenario that I, I swear plays out way more often than not. Um, I, I want to be supportive of my child because it's my child, right? Um, but I think it would be wrong to just allow my, my male child to commit to being a female child um, within within, you know, if they're 13 or 15 or something, um, to, to start taking hormone blockers or to um, physically change, you know, have a, a procedure to change, especially at that young. And so in this situation, I would, I would recommend, hey, let's not do that for a couple of years. Um, I know it's, it's a struggle for sure, I can, I can, uh, I can empathize with you, um, but let's let's think about the possible ramifications of that, um, and let's let's work on the hundred percent reasons for why you would want to change. Now, at a certain point, you know, I there's you know, at sixteen you can drive a car and you can have the trust to do that uh, legally. At eighteen. You can smoke. Uh, at 21, you can drink. You know, there's all these things where it's like, are you adult? Are you responsible enough to do these things? So I would say at 18, um, or I would say, actually for this for this situation, I would say 21. Um, at 21 is is my cutoff of hey, you can at this point you can do what you want to do. Um, because I want you to be your your own self. I want you to to live your own life. Um, but up until then, <laughs> I want to make you the best person you can be, and uh, smart enough to do what you want to do, and know the correct reasons why you want to do it. So if you want to be if you want to be a girl, and if um, that's who you truly believe you are, I would postpone. Um, postpone that transformation um, not not actively discouraging it but hopefully letting them learn who they are because again we're young we're trying to figure out who we are and I know as a parent I don't want them to regret something dramatic um, but I also want to support them so if they think they're female you know I want to figure out those reasons why um, and have them know themselves as best as they can because I feel like a lot of people don't know who they are <laughs> for a very long time and so I would, I would love to learn who they are um, to figure that out this video is very long um, <laughs> but uh, I'm just gonna recap <laughs> to say I challenge I challenge my children to figure out who they are um, and the reasons why they want to do the things they want to do. So then, when when they do, and I can and I can see that, then I want to be fully on board to let them pursue their things as long as they're kind and nice, um, and caring and loving.
people, you know, I want them to be independent. I want them uh, to be able to do the things they want to do and know that they can do them themselves. And then I want them, oh shit, I'm already forgetting my third one. <laughs> I want them to be, uh, I want them to be passionate about the things they want to be passionate about and achieve uh, a meaningful life. And so there's a video. Um, that's my parenting style. Hopefully you got something from that. If you didn't, um, I'm sorry. I just, for some reason, it just was, I was very passionate about this topic. So here you go. Unedited. Love you guys. See you in the next one.